Today's life advice was presented by Modelo. Modelo, brewed for those with a fighting spirit. Life advice, life advice, rr at gmail.com. A lot of follow ups to the pedantic guy. Um, I guess he mixed up IE and EG. Oh, so guys are email. fucking, yeah, guys <laughs> are fucking hammering him. That's the risk you run when you start correcting people. Yeah. But the problem is, I wasn't sure that I even wanted to address it because then he'll probably come back with something. And like, guys got really nasty about it. We're not going to read all those emails. Yeah, I but I think they were just so annoyed with this guy who we all agreed that was a massive overcorrection. And don't like keep math riddles from your girlfriend. You're going to marry this person. You're like, oh, sorry. Sorry. Somebody needs to work on their division. Um, so nobody seemed to like that email or anyway. And then the IE, uh, EG confusion. Somebody said it's fifth grade Latin, which again, wouldn't that be kind of like, do you mean somebody who's taken Latin? <laughs> like, yeah, do you guys no know Latin, the op- No Latin in my public school. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. Do, do you guys know the difference? I don't know that I know the difference. Latin. I've been do. trying to get rid of it for years. Go ahead. What? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't. Do you know the difference? I don't know that I know the difference. Uh, I thought they both meant example. Well, here we go. Um, <laughs> now we're reading it. Here we go. For example. Yeah, I'm reading this too. Yeah, Just EG. The and then IE stands for, he's giving us all the Latin breakdown in other words. Yeah, I could see that. I knew there was a difference. I didn't know. So there you go. Learned Fuck new everybody. Every you know, just guys are, just guys are super mad. So, we'll uh, we'll keep it moving. Let's get back to our wheelhouse here. So the Latin. Do you have buddies this, that took Latin in high school? By the way, Actually, I took guy, it in junior high. The story, the guy of the story that I told about who was between colleges, he was a big Latin guy in high school. Took Latin. I was like, "What are you ever going to use that?" He's like, "It's just cool. Tell people you speak Latin." I'm like, "Honestly, it is kind of true. It is kind of cool if you speak Latin." That was his major. No, he was just like, everyone took, I took Spanish, you know, hey, Spanish is the next language. Everybody's going to speak. It's going to be useful. Some people took French. Some people took Italian, German. He's like, now nah, I'm going to zag. There was like one Latin class and he took Latin and tried to convince everybody that he was going to be cool because he took Latin. And maybe he is. It's I don't definitely know. a conversation. It's a, it's a dead yeah, language. Was- I don't know why people, I don't know. It doesn't make a ton of sense to me. <laughs> Well, the reason you would take it when I took it when I was younger is that it was the foundation for all the romance languages that right. you were going to take, who you're going to decide to take later. Oh, uh, so you're going to learn all the other languages by learning Latin first. <laughs> like, no yeah, idea. that's actually, that's actually the idea. <laughs> Clearly, not, you know, none of it stuck with me. Um, so how many yeah. languages do you speak, Ryan? Uh, no, nah, I, I wouldn't say I can <laughs> speak another language at all. Yeah. <laughs> Except Latin partially latin <laughs> no I, I i took years of french years of it and so when i was over there if i needed to say something we've already covered this i i can i can get a sentence out that i need to unless i'm ripped off by it by wait i thought driver. i thought you took german too because remember your story about the going to the german you went you met jans right yes on your on your yes yes not yeah. Jans, yes on your german field trip you don't you, you didn't speak german i picked up a few things but Guten Tag. <laughs> Stack and say spear. <laughs> he was training to be a javelin thrower. I wonder if he were, I, you know, let's think, I'm trying to think how old he would be now. <laughs> yes. I forgot yeah. about that. We could check in on Yentz, see if he's Stack and say spearing all over the place. <laughs> it's probably a little old. His, his prime, what are your prime years for throwing a javelin? You guys Ooh. ever throw it? No, but I had a buddy that, that was a javelin guy. Didn't really go anywhere, but. Seems was cool. he just into the scene or was he good at it? Like, did he just like having a bag of javelins and then like think, put it, I'm sure he put a headband on the whole deal, I think he right? had, I think he had just watched like Troy with uh, Brad Pitt was just like, this is, this is my thing. This is my calling. <laughs> I'm going to start throwing shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But was he on the actual high school team? Yeah, no, team? he threw, I mean, listen, it wasn't a good team. It was, you know, something, something's in high school. He's just coming in Central seven Connecticut. Yeah, every time. Not, not killing it, but. I mean, it's probably an awesome feeling to throw a javelin, you know? Yeah, we had we had some pretty shitty ones, and we used to chuck them around. I don't, you know, I think you kind of have to know what you're doing because there's this whole curl of the wrist thing, whatever. 
I don't know. Let's let's uh let's stop talking. More about track this. and field later. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do that in our track and field pod coming up this Christmas. Okay, guys, 21 years old, 5'9", about 160, former member of the skinny fat gang, but have worked into the lean muscular category, improving slowly but surely. These stats are important to the story that follows. I've been working out playing sports at my local YMCA since first grade, but only began weightlifting about four days a week there in the last two years. Today, I was hitting legs and was three sets into leg extension when I got a call from my childhood friend's mom, which is rare and not normally a good sign. All right, so childhood's friend mom calls him. I took the call immediately and was relieved to know that it was just her asking me to house and dog sit for her next weekend. I said I'd be glad to, and we agreed to discuss details later. The call lasted one minute and 34 seconds. One thirty-four. Okay. At this moment, I was approached by an older man, maybe in his mid-70s, who stated in a raised voice, quit checking your email and get <laughs> off the machine. <laughs> email. It's the best. <laughs> I remain calm because there are a lot of old men at this gym that don't have a ton of awareness and normally have a very twisted sense of gym etiquette. I remain calm and told him that I have just two sets left and he could work in with me if he liked. He simply walked away and I spent, oh, and I went about my workout. About a minute and a half later during the rest of my set, I just uh, gotten done after this first encounter. A second man, maybe 55, started yelling at me extremely aggressively to get off the machine. <laughs> it was at this point I got defensive and told him, uh, told him to cool it back away so I could finish my last set. This only made him more furious as he proceeded to tower over me. I'm still sitting in the machine. So think like leg extension. I think that's what we're talking about here. And somebody's just in your business. I can't get up because he's blocking the side you enter and exit the machine. He gets less than an inch from my face and continues to yell. I pushed my hand against his chest and told him to back off, but he weighed about 250 pounds or more. And I knew I stood no chance if things got physical. So I only tried this once. His reaction to my attempt to push him away was to get closer and say, what are you going to do, fucking punk? Huh? <laughs> what are you going to do about it, buddy? I simply sat there staring at him blankly and figured I'd just hold my ground and remain calm. If he hits me, he hits me. Thankfully, a 40-year-old man who witnessed the whole altercation comes over to defuse the situation, just tells me in, in an, an apologetic tone to just leave the machine so they'll settle down. I happily oblige and walk toward the free weights as the two men keep chirping at me with fucking idiot <laughs> and punk, et cetera. I.E. <laughs> um, a YMCA employee comes over to ask for my explanation of the situation. I knew it there was the Y. I was going to say this has to be a YMCA. Yeah, <laughs> anyway. no, he already mentioned yeah, it was a Y. Right, my bad, my bad. No, this has YMCA written all over it. Uh, I happily... Well, okay, all right, whatever. Uh, there wasn't much that could be done since he hadn't, in fact, struck me. He then proceeded to say that we ask our patrons to keep their phone used to a minimum. And I said, all right and walked off. So wait, the YMCA person took the old people's side and said, we asked that you could stay off your phone. Well, that's their About, base, right? Old people is the YMCA's base, really. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right. <laughs> like, we can't, we can't screw up. Very good call, Kyle. Like, we need their votes. <laughs> About five minutes later, I noticed both men had left the gym completely. I began asking bystanders around the gym if they had seen what had happened, and not a single person thought I was in the wrong. I asked one group of younger guys about uh, how long they thought I had been at the machine before I was approached, and they agreed it couldn't have been more than a couple of minutes. Am I the asshole in this situation? What should I have done differently? If I were bigger than I am, I definitely would have pushed the guy away and stood up, but that wasn't an option. And what is the gym etiquette uh, ruling on such a situation? Love to hear y'all's thoughts, especially Ryan's. If I'm on the wrong, please rip into me. Thanks. Love the pod. By the way, he did do a screenshot of the phone call so that we could see how long he was on the phone because a lot of people have been known to just go, oh, man, it was only... Um, and I think he's right. He said Apple rounds up, so it says two minutes. Hmm. It says two minutes on this one. Uh, I think the first thing is just understanding that every man that lifts weights, there's some group, they, get, they meet once they turn 70, and they just say, hey, fuck the world, Tupac style, and that's just it. Like you don't, none of us know until you're a man that turns 70 that still works out. And then they just go, Hey, here's your towel, but never use it. Just <laughs> balls out whenever you can. 
do weird shit around the blow dryers <laughs> and every machine is yours. No matter what, every machine is yours. There's no, you can stay on it as long as you want. If anybody even starts on another one, you have the right to tell them they're wrong, even though they definitely are. So that's what you kind of have to remember through all this. The 50 year old guy, I don't know, maybe he has a relative who's 70 that's told him about this secret thing that happens uh, once older guys are still at the gym. It sounds like you weren't in the wrong. All I can go by is that maybe they caught it. They caught you taking the phone call and they just didn't like it. You know, the phone at the gym is kind of a shitty thing. But again, I've done it a couple times where I took the call and ran off somewhere else and sat down where I thought it was at least okay for me to like, sometimes you have to take the call. Other people will just keep working out and that can be weird. But I guess at the same time, if they're still using the equipment, that's better than not using the equipment and going to take the phone call. So it sounds like this guy caught you in a way that he thought was much worse. And it sounds like this guy's already mad about a ton of shit already. So you just gave him an excuse to get mad about something. And that like made his fucking day. Uh, if you thought he was going to mop you, I don't really blame you. Like it kind of sucks when another guy's confronting you and you're like, I think this guy would kill me. You know, like we all want to pretend we're capable of, of protecting ourselves. But you know, sometimes you're like, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if this one's going to go my way. Although just a hard face slap, I would have rooted for it. Just be like, if he's like putting his face an inch away from your face, and being this much of a bully, and he's 50, like, what a fucking dick this human being is. Especially if your story all checks out, which I tend to, because you included the screen grab of the phone call. But an open hand slap would have just been, like, it would have freaked him out. He he might not have fought you. He might have been like, oh my God. Like, this, you know, because just bullies aren't used to actually having people hit him back. Uh, but again, maybe you're better off not getting beat up at a YMCA, because then you wouldn't be able to, you know, take care of this this lady's dog in a week. So I love ornery old man stories. I love that it was in a YMCA too. I mean, I don't love that, that it, this specifically happened to you. I just, something about ornery old guys. I just think we, we need them just to spice things up. I mean, but as soon as you go like the checks, quit checking your emails, bud is like, oh, oh, I love it. <laughs> but uh, that aside, I think this guy's a really thoughtful guy. The guy, the emailer, he, he, like he took us through the things and he willing to admit that he's wrong. And, he even like checked with a couple people afterwards when he could have just let it go. You know, I, I, I like our emailer a lot. I will say maybe those guys, like I've been, I've been in a situation before, like, I don't know, used to do stuff at a laundromat before, just like things where there's communal things. And I've been like, look at this fucking asshole. Just, and it's like, I'm wrong. Like I'll think this whole thing for like five minutes and then I'll be like wrong about whatever's going on. And I make this whole story in my head about how this guy's got no regard, you know, no consideration for others. And it's just like, oh, wait a second. I'm glad, I'm glad I never act on any of these things because, you know, you're wrong. It's like a coin flip, whether you're right about what's going on with a complete stranger or not. So uh, this is a guy who just, you know, acts on those things. So I think, I think, you know, I could see why he maybe wanted that to use that machine for like two minutes before you took the call. And now it's been four minutes and he doesn't feel like you're using it properly. And he doesn't know this, this situation or anything. So I think, I mean, I have the thoughts of this ordinary old man often. I don't ever act on them really, but, um, you know, I think it's just, we could, I could see how he got there and, um, it's just, you're definitely not wrong. I'm sure. You could have done something better, but, um, I don't know. Just, you got a world has to watch out for ordinary old guys. I'm kind of with Kyle on this one because the first thing that came to my mind was, you know, the, like the Brady press conference that just happened where people were asking him all these questions. He's just like, man, I'm 45 years old. Like, I just got a lot of shit going on. <laughs> like old dudes, like you just don't like some of those guys are just kind of miserable. And like the gym is their one thing that they have. They're probably alone. Maybe they're not without their wife and kids. It's their Zen time. And not that you like really majorly inconvenience him, but it does seem like things can easily get blown out of proportion. My other thought was, is this like a steroid, like roid raid situation from like a 50 year old guy? Like that seems a little aggro to like get in somebody's face for, you know, 90 seconds of extra phone activity. Um, but the final thing would be, is there, I, I wonder, like, obviously there's two guys that came up to him, two guys, two separate guys. Do they know each other? Didn't seem like they knew each other. They're different age groups. Maybe they chat in the background. Who knows? Is this, is this like a reoccurring thing? Have you done something else before that that like triggered these two guys to really go at you this one time? Otherwise, I mean, who knows? Like maybe it's just a bad day. Both guys are pissed off and they're just in their own feelings and their lives are miserable. It is what it is. But it just seems very odd that like one 90 second phone call would trigger two separate guys 
to go at you, including one guy getting in your face. Maybe I'm wrong, but like just maybe you're like that guy at the gym that maybe is looking at his phone a little bit too much and people at the gym have taken notice. Well, he also said, I left it out. He said he likes to work out in peacock wings. <laughs> okay. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, my guess is that the 50 and the 70 year old guy know each other and the 70 year old guy just immediately like, Kyle, you made a great point. Like, how often do we all do something where we pretend we know every angle of it? And you're like, I can't believe this person's doing this. And then you're like, actually, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're doing. And you're like, man, I would have felt like an idiot. Thank if I God called I kept like, that to myself. Right. Yeah. Like, I had this thing where everybody was cutting everybody. And I was kind of like, what the fuck is going on at this place? And I was like trying to take, take stock of like what was happening. And then as I got to the counter, I was like, what the fuck is the deal with this? And she's like, oh, there's a separate membership and this is how it works. And you're like, they're basically, it's, it's kind of like clear, but for something else. And you don't know it if you haven't done it before. So you would think, wait, I'm just getting worked by all of these other people. And in fact, no, no, you are supposed to get work because they have paid for a different thing than you did. And like, you're just wrong. And again, it was, it was a while ago and I was like, oh, all right. Yeah. yeah okay. This makes all the sense of the world. So you're right. I mean, I think Saruti gets a good point, but it's my guess is that these two guys are just old dudes at a YMCA that act like it's their fucking place, that they own the place. And you got on the phone and the guy was already pre-mad about a bunch of other things in his own life. And there's been other people that have been on the phone too long in the gym. And this dude was like next young guy, next whippersnapper that gets on his cellular device. I'm going to let him have the what for for checking his fucking hotmail <laughs> sheriff of the YMCA and, <laughs> right and so that's what happened this guy was already mad about 10 versions of you already and then the 50 year old guy's like fucking right this guy sucks email checker and I think <laughs> you know shit happens man shit happens I, I one time went to a new gym where I grabbed the wrong dumbbell sizes and just started flat benching them and at that point I kind of knew what I was doing a little bit but I, I just was, I was so thrown off by the new gym and the, the way they worked out everything. And some guy was like, what are you doing? I'm like, uh, what? He's like, you have wrong dumbbells. And then it was kind of like, you know, you got to know what you're doing if you're going to be in here. And I was like, okay, <laughs> fucking guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, okay, Joe Weeder. <laughs> like, you know, I should have just said, uh, muscle confusion. Ever heard of it? <laughs> <laughs> okay i don't know take advice from smalls yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean granted i did fuck up but it was like it didn't need to be escalated to like <sighs> yeah but that sucks like let people fuck up on their own okay like we don't need everyone correcting it this goes back to the the email from last week just leave people alone they want to be wrong let them be wrong Mind your I just business. Don't, yeah if he was trying to help Maybe, nah. But it was it was definitely a <laughs> trying to make. And I was like, I already felt stupid enough. I grabbed like a forty five and fifty. It wasn't like I had a ten and an eighty. It was like, what the fuck's going on? It was like, you know, just you know, if you're gonna be here, uh, you're like, what? We have a certain standard that we like what? to hold. Yeah. What? What? What do I? Why don't you write a list down and I'll grab it before I leave here today. <laughs> <laughs> But of course, your part of it is like you feel stupid because then you get called out for it. And again, it wasn't like it was, I don't know, my first day, I would have been like, ah, all right. But I was like, why, why did I do that? Shit, I don't know. Sometimes people do dumb shit. Okay. Um, new roommate is a former pro athlete. 25, 5, 10, 180. I find myself in a bit of a unique predicament. My roommate recently got his big break, which means he'll be away on set shooting for several months. So his current roommate um, is now be working on a movie, I guess, a TV cool. show. In lieu of his departure, an acquaintance of ours has filled his spot in the apartment. Two bedroom, two bath. Nice. Two bath is huge. Yeah, but I'm just super confused. I love that Kyle immediately was on kind of the layout. It's a great call. So this guy has a roommate who's an actor, and so then an acquaintance of the emailer and the actor said, hey, I know someone who can sublet the room. 
Um, this new roommate is a former athlete. Everyone listening to the show would know. What? At first, I was confused as to why he would want to live in my apartment. As am Bye. I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's all right. We're gonna leave it. We're gonna leave it. Uh, a you little know more the name? vague. They, he, he, he dropped the name. Can we get a league? No, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. Uh, oh, that's he nice. doesn't ever put it in here. Okay. He's in his forties, and I live in a semi-decent apartment building with average rent, where most people in the building are subsidized. It's not a place anyone would expect this man to be living, considering it's not up for debate. He has made over tens of millions of dollars in his career. It is important to note he did go through. Um, a divorce, but something just doesn't add up. He doesn't have a car. He's always asking to use mine. He <laughs> pays rent late. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but I know he has money. He buys new expensive shit all the time. The overall vibe of the living situation is off. It's just fucking weird, man. <laughs> That's the only way I can describe it. Luckily, he's only here every month or so because he has a job that forces him to travel. Uh, so he does have a flow of income. While living with him when he is around, I've come to fucking hate it. Uh, don't get me started on his other stuff uh, or all of his ideas. There's endless ideas for podcasts. Now, I know all this is probably a product of being a former athlete. I'm well aware. I'm also well aware I could just tell my friend, hey, man, the guy's not working out. He's got to go. Find someone to fill in a spot. It could be over like that. But it'd be hard to find someone to pay $400 more than the room is actually supposed to pay and uh, where's the fun in that? Oh, so he's what? upcharging this guy, right? That's what he's saying? The premium is the extra 400 bucks? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I'm writing in because I'm wondering if you guys have any advice on how to subtly fuck um, small pranks, if you may. Good old psychological warfare. Not necessarily pranks, but I want to fuck with this guy. Get his head. Putting glue in his shampoo would be too obvious. I need ideas that can't be obvious enough that I did it, but still a slight hint in the air that something may be off. I'll give you an example. I had a friend who would move people's things around the house. If your phone was on the table, he'd move it to the counter when you weren't around and so on and so on. It happens enough that so drives you crazy and you end up thinking you're crazy. Ideas of that nature are greatly appreciated. We're going to get in some hijinks. <laughs> yeah. <it'd> have, <laughs> well said, Kyle. <laughs> What kind of, I haven't had a roommate since I was 21, so I don't. Are we, are we sure it's a good idea to fuck with this guy? I don't think it is. I definitely <laughs> I don't think it is. I, I, don't, I don't know if I want to partake in this. <laughs> you don't, I, you I, don't want the possibility of getting your ass beat in your own house. By a former professional athlete who, you know, has clearly some shady stuff going on. Yeah, he never puts the email, uh, he never puts the name in there. Which is, he he had a couple things in there that make me think I could narrow it down. The but, way he described him, like what, I, I'm guessing I could be totally wrong, but like former baseball player. Why? Do you think former baseball players? See, now this is going in a direction that we don't know. So maybe a couple hot foots, some gum on the old cap, Kyle? <laughs> 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 like, man, somebody keeps putting gum on my cap. Oh, man, I'm going to have to move out. Uh, let's see. I don't know. I think it, it it sounds a lot like somebody who's always kind of gotten their way. Like, I'll tell you, even with working with some of the guys that weren't even the best pro athletes, but were pro athletes, every now and then there was this kind of little reminder of like, I expect somebody to take care of this for me. Do you think that's fair, Saruti? Yeah. And I can even I can even like the person, but I'd be like, oh, these are these little moments, these little reminders where you're expecting just more people around to fucking help you because that's yeah. the way it's been your whole life. And, you know, I don't know. At some point for me, I would be like, I don't want to have to rely on people. Um I don't know. It sounds like none of us want to actually tell this guy to start doing pranks with these guys. If you could tell tolerate bad smells, start cooking fish, leaving stuff in the sink when you know he's going to be around for a couple of days, maybe. I mean, maybe it's just to the point where it's like, all right, this guy's That's just sucks. It's like, it would suck for you, but if you don't want to just be like, tell the one guy, be like, hey, also, isn't this guy in a movie shoot? How long does it take to shoot a movie? 
is this like Top Gun we're talking about here? Is this going to take 10 years? Is this Avatar? Or are we, is this guy going to be home in two months? Avatar is a lot of CGI, so I would imagine that's over quicker. Mm. Maybe. I mean, I think the last one took a while. <laughs> I don't know. All I mean is like, you could, you could, you could, you could, I, you could, if you could tolerate being like living in filth for a little bit, maybe he could just be like, you want to make him think you suck, but not intentionally. It's just like, this guy can't help himself. He's a fucking slob. He stinks. Reverse He's dirty. Suck. Yeah. Reverse suck. But I don't, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't like do stuff to his toothbrush and, uh, you know, <laughs> his, his shampoo and like, you know, I'd say have parties, but it sounds like this guy would be fired up. Life of the party. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just start yeah, inviting yeah. people over all the time, and they'd be like, "Hey, you know, we gotta, we gotta get your crew over here again." So I don't think that I think that would backfire. I don't know. I guess I'm just kind of of the mindset that like, it's you just want your roommate to move out. I would tell the acquaintance who set this thing up, say, "Hey, just make up a huge lie. Say something like you're dating somebody who isn't healthy or something. I don't know. Seriously, just." Go to the acquaintance and go, you've got to get this person the fuck out of here. Not me. But you're also like, how bad is it, man? Because you said he's almost never around. You you know, when somebody has to leave for a little while or or maybe even move out as a guy who like doesn't have like can't cover a whole place by himself, you you probably feel like, oh, shit. So then that's got solved. And it sounds like you're making four hundred dollars a month extra, which, you know sounds like you could probably use so like how bad is this really think about it like is this going to run its course soon and it's like you could just fucking deal with it is the other thing that's what i would do probably probably extra four hundred dollars a month it's also just a fascinating situation because his one roommate is like potentially this up-and-coming actor and his the guy that they just like mutually potentially know to fill in is some ex-athlete who has made tens of millions like who we is all know like, where is this <laughs> who is this guy like I, yeah we all exactly i don't it's it's just so strange to me. I and don't they're know. all in a subsidized building or something like that. This gets yeah. weirder and weirder. I it, it, I feel like you're like, is it possible you're being pranked? Like, that's not, not, are we being so pranked? None of this makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No. It did. It did. <laughs> did dawn on me that this is a fake email. Um. But it was so unique that I figured, hell, we'll give it a chance. But what? we're not really even answering it because I just I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, you get a piss in your shampoo, bro. No. We'll get out of there in six weeks. Like, it just you know, he's probably not going to know. One, one of the trendy stuff. ones that I like, I've, have you, I've seen this, I think, on TikTok. It's like people will just change f all the photos in people's houses to other things and see how long it takes them to actually notice it. But at some point, he's going to like you. I don't think you want to like do something that he's going to notice. Right. Because then like you could then you're going to start shit and you're going to create more problems for yourself. Like you brought up the fish thing, Kyle, too. That, that but that fucks you over, too. You don't want to ruin your own existence. So I, I don't know. Like at some point, if you're if you're changing out and putting shaving cream in his toothpaste, like he's going to know it was you and he's going to be pissed off. That's going to create more problems for you. So I just you're making your your existence even more miserable. Start smoking cigarettes in the house. See what happens. That's what. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> Join a band. Start practicing if, in the living room. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, what is it? Be like, it's 12 piece percussion. That's it. It's all interpretive percussion. We need to be no guitarists. <laughs> no just melodies. all percussion all the time. And I smoke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a gun. All right. Um, not sure that was one of the best ones we've ever done, but I don't know. I don't know what to do with that one. I mean, all of us could sit here and come up with a million things to do that would suck for the other guy, but I don't know. I think there just comes an age where you just be like, why don't you just fucking talk to somebody and be like, get this guy out of here. <laughs> right. Yeah. Make it a fucking home alone or, trap just to get this guy out of here. <laughs> I know. I know. So sorry if that was disappointing. Thank you for submitting questions this week. Uh, we'll be back on Wednesday. Thanks to Saruti. Thanks to Kyle. Ryan Russell, the podcast, regular Spotify.